Hello and welcome to this microwave engineering lecture titled Transmission Line Resonators. In this lecture, we're going to go over the use of different transmission line sections with various lengths and terminations, either short-circuited or open-circuited. We'll first look at the short-circuited half-wavelength resonators, then the short-circuited quarter-wavelength resonator, and finally, the open-circuited half-wavelength resonator. As we have seen in this course, ideal lumped circuit elements are often unattainable at microwave frequencies, so we need to use distributed elements like transmission lines. Here we will look at the short-circuited half-wavelength line resonator. At the resonant frequency omega naught, the length is L equal lambda over 2. But also notice that there are also other resonant modes at multiples of lambda over 2, given by this expression where n is an integer. Here is the voltage distribution when n equals 1, which corresponds to the first mode, and the length is lambda over 2. Here is the voltage distribution for the second mode, where n equals 2, and the length of the line is equal to lambda. We'll first begin our analysis by finding the input impedance. The input impedance for a short-circuited half-wavelength transmission line is given by this expression, assuming a lossy transmission line. With trigonometric identity, we can rewrite this expression like this. In practice, we usually use low-loss transmission lines, which means that alpha L is much, much smaller than 1. So the term tangent alpha L is roughly equal to alpha L. Now let's look at frequencies near resonance to find beta L. Remember that omega equals omega naught plus delta omega. Now beta L equals omega L over the phase velocity, which in turn is equal to omega naught L plus delta omega L over phase velocity. At the resonant frequency omega naught, we have that L equals lambda over 2, which is equal to pi times the phase velocity over the resonant frequency. We can now substitute this expression and write beta L as pi plus delta omega times pi over omega naught. Now we can find tangent of beta L, which is equal to tangent of this expression and is roughly equal to delta omega times pi over omega naught. Using this result, the input impedance Z in is now given by this. Simplifying the expression, the input impedance is roughly equal to Z naught times alpha L plus J delta omega pi over omega naught. Notice that this expression has a form of the input impedance of a series RLC resonance circuit given by this expression. From this, we can calculate the RLC parameters, which are for R equals C naught times alpha L, the inductance L equals C naught times pi over two omega naught, Capacitance C equals to 2 over omega naught squared times inductance L. And the unloaded Q factor, Q naught, is given by omega naught times inductance L over R, which is equal to pi over 2 alpha L, which is equal to beta over 2 alpha. Now let's look at an example of the Q factor of a half wavelength coaxial line resonator. Assume a half-wavelength resonator is made from a piece of copper coaxial line having an inner conductor radius of 1 mm and an outer conductor radius of 4 mm. If the resonant frequency is 5 GHz, compare the unloaded Q, Q0 of an air-filled coaxial line to that of a Teflon-filled coaxial line resonator. Here is a picture of the coaxial line with these dimensions. A, inner radius equals 1 mm and B outer radius equals 4 millimeters and it's going to be filled either with air or Teflon. Here are the properties for air, which is epsilon r equals 1 and loss tangent equals 0, 
and for Teflon, which is epsilon r equals 2.08 and loss tangent equal to 0 0.0004. We first calculate the attenuation of the coaxial line. The conductivity for copper is given by this number. And now we can calculate the surface resistivity at 5 gigahertz for copper, which is given by the square root of omega times mu naught over 2 sigma for copper, which is equal to this expression. Having found the surface resistivity, we can find the attenuation due to conductor loss, which is given by this expression for a coaxial transmission line. We will do first the attenuation for air, which is given by this formula and gives us this result. Now we calculate the attenuation for Teflon, which is given by this and the result is this number. Now we will calculate the attenuation due to dielectric loss, which is given by this formula. K0 times the square root of epsilon r over 2 times the loss tangent. For air, the loss tangent is 0, so we have that the attenuation due to dielectric loss is 0. And for Teflon, the attenuation is given by this expression Plug in the numbers, we get this result. Now we're ready to calculate the unloaded Qs for air and Teflon. The Q for air equals beta over 2 alpha, which is equal to 2380. The Q factor for Teflon is equal to beta over 2 alpha, which is the sum of the attenuation due to dielectric loss and also conductor and it's equal to 1218. Notice that the Q factor for air is almost twice as big as the Q factor for Teflon. Now let's look at the short-circuited quarter wavelength line resonator. This transmission line creates a parallel resonance or anti-resonance. The input impedance again assuming a lossy transmission line is given by this expression. Using trigonometric identities, we can rewrite in this form. We can rewrite it again for easier manipulation. Now we'll look at frequencies in the resonance for the quarter wavelength resonator. We have that beta L equals this familiar expression, which is now equal to pi over 2 plus pi delta omega over 2 omega naught which leads to cotangent of beta L equals to the negative tangent of pi delta omega over 2 omega naught, which is now roughly equal to minus pi delta omega over 2 omega naught. Again, we assume a small loss transmission line. So alpha n is much less than 1, and so a hyperbolic tangent of alpha L is roughly equal to alpha L. Putting all these numbers together into the input impedance, we obtain this expression which can be simplified to Z0 over alpha L plus J pi delta omega over 2 omega naught. Notice that this input impedance has the same form as the impedance of a parallel RLC circuit given by this expression. Now, the RLC parameters for this resonator are these ones. The resistance equals Z0 over alpha L. The inductance L equals 1 over omega naught squared times capacitance C. And C equals pi over 4 omega naught times Z0. The unloaded Q is now given by Q0 equals omega naught RC, which is equal to pi over 4 alpha L. And is also equal to beta over 2 alpha. Now let's take a look at the open circuited half wavelength line resonator. This resonator behaves as a parallel resonance circuit at multiples of lambda over 2, where L equals n lambda over 2 and L is an integer. Here is the voltage distribution for an open circuited half wavelength resonator when n equals 1 and the length is equal to lambda over 2. Here is another animation of the second resonant mode of the half wavelength line resonator where n equals 2 and the length equals lambda. 
We will do the same analysis as the short-circuited half-wavelength line resonator. Assume that L equals lambda over 2 at the resonant frequency omega naught, and let omega be our frequency new resonance, given by omega naught plus delta omega. Thus, beta L equals pi plus pi delta omega over omega naught. And we have the tangent beta L is roughly equal to delta omega pi over omega naught and again, assuming low loss lines, tangent of alpha L is roughly equal to alpha L. Putting everything in the input impedance formula, we obtain this expression. Now notice that the input impedance has the same form as a parallel resonance circuit. So we can obtain the RLC parameters, which are given by this. R equals Z naught over alpha L, inductance L equals 1 over omega naught squared times C, and C equals pi over 2 omega naught times Z naught. The unloaded Q is also given by beta over 2 alpha. Now let's look at another example, now for an open circuited half wavelength line resonator. A microstrip resonator is constructed from a half wavelength length of a 50 ohm open circuited microstrip line and it's made of copper. The substrate is Teflon with dielectric permittivity of 2.08, the relative permittivity 2.08, the loss tangent equal to 0 0.0004, and it has a thickness of 0.159 centimeters. Calculate the required length for resonance at 5 gigahertz and the unloaded Q of the resonator. Ignore fringing fields at the edge of the line. In previous lectures from topic 2, specifically from lecture 2C, transmission line examples, we can obtain the width for this microstrip transmission line, which is given by 0 0.508 centimeters. We can also obtain from the same lecture the effective permittivity, which is given by 1.80. With these parameters, the resonant length can now be calculated. We know that L equals lambda over 2 at resonance, so this is equal to C0 over 2F times the square root of the effective permittivity, and it's equal to 2.24 centimeters. The propagation constant beta is equal to pi F over the phase velocity, which is equal to this expression, and it's equal to 151 radians per meter. Now we will calculate the attenuation due to conductor loss in a microstrip line, which is given by this expression that we previously saw. Remember that for copper, the surface resistivity is given by this number. And so putting everything together, we get a result of 0 0.0724. The attenuation due to dielectric loss in a microstrip is given by this expression. Putting all the numbers together, gives us this. Now the unloaded Q can be calculated, which is equal to beta over 2 alpha. And it's equal to the alpha due to dielectric loss and the alpha due to conductor loss. We can see that the Q factor is equal to 783. 